Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. And today we're gonna talk about screwdrivers and why they are so amazing. So stick around and I'll see you guys right after this. <music> Okay guys, all screwdrivers are not the same. In fact, screwdriver technology has taken some leaps and bounds over the years, over the decades. So let's take a look at the evolution of screwdrivers or the screwdriver revolution that provided what we have on the market today. Now, most of us, or if not all of us, are familiar with what we're looking at right now. These are standard screwdrivers, okay? This right here is called a flathead screwdriver, if you didn't know. Uh, look at it. The head of it, the tip of it's flat but it's also called a slot head screwdriver because you insert it in screw heads with a single slot. You stick it in there and you turn it. It's also called a flat tip screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, a flat screwdriver. You know, there's many names for it, but we're familiar with flat head. Now, flat head can also be confused with a flat head screw, right? If you look at this screw right here, it has a flat head, but the slot does not accommodate a flathead screwdriver. It accommodates what we call this here, a Phillips screwdriver. Back in the late 19th century, early 20th century, a guy by the name of Henry Phillips invented the Phillips head screw, which is what we're looking at right here. This screw was able to take more torque and as a result was able to be fastened much tighter than other screws. And the Phillips head screwdriver was the obvious mate to accomplish this task. Now, if you look at the head of a Phillips screwdriver, it looks like a cross or the intersection of two perpendicular lines. And that's because it's meant to fit in or mate with a screw head with the same configuration. Now, here are some screwdrivers that are very strange looking, but to an optometrist, maybe not. Now, these are precision screwdrivers. Notice how tiny the screwdriver heads are. So if we take the last flathead that we looked at and compare the size of this flathead on the right, to the precision flathead on the left, that's quite a difference. The one on the right is about three times as big as the one on the left. Now, why would you need a screwdriver head this small? Well, you'll need a screwdriver head this small for very tiny screws. For example, if you look at glasses, if you wear glasses and you look at the screw that pivots or joins this part of the glasses to the arm here, you see how small that screw is, right? You need a precision screwdriver head for that. Let me see if I can bring a little closer. That's pretty small. I think I have another pair of glasses here. This screw head has a single slot, so it'll take a precision flathead screwdriver like this one. Okay, so what's better than having two of these? Well, I'll tell you. Having one that accomplishes both tasks. In comes the two-in-one model, where you have a screwdriver that has a bit that has a Phillips on one side and a flathead on the other, and you just insert it in the adapter there, and you have a two-in-one. Save space, more convenient, and you don't have to go looking for one or the other because you have them all in one tool. So further along the journey of screwdriver innovation, someone got even more creative and said, instead of a two-in-one model, let's create a six-in-one model. That's what this is advertised as. So it has an adapter that you can separate from the main body or handle, and it reveals two bits on each side. Well, those bits can come out, and you have a Phillips on one side and a flathead on the other. And on this side, you have the same thing, except it's smaller to accommodate smaller screws. Okay, so that's four. You have two on this one. You have two on this one. It's advertised as a six and one, so I'm confused. Is the adapter also included? And even if it is, that just makes five. I don't know, maybe it's the handle as well, but I don't think so. So next, they decided to ratchet up the innovation, no pun intended, and they created the ratcheting screwdriver. Now this screwdriver is like a ratchet. This section with the arrows pointing right or left, or depending on how you hold it, will determine the direction of the ratcheting mechanism. So if I click it to the right, and I wanna screw something in, it works like a ratchet. 
if I click it to the left and I want to unscrew something, it works that way. And if I keep it in the middle, it just acts like a regular screwdriver. So the ratcheting mechanism is made to reduce the amount of degrees you have to turn your wrist in order to screw something in or out, which greatly decreases the risk of injury to your wrist when screwing something in or out. What's also great about this innovation is that it can accommodate multiple bits on the body of the tool itself. As you can see here, it holds about six bits in the housing of the tool itself, which makes it quite convenient. So if you want to exchange a bit like the one you have in the adapter with another bit, you simply take this out, put it in the slot right here, turn the housing, the yellow part of the housing, to the bit that you desire until the yellow part lines up with the black part to create a full opening. And you can simply take that bit out, put it on, and there you go. Another plus for this tool is that the butt end doubles as a compartment that you can store bits, screws, or something else in there. You can even take the bits and install them in the cap like that. What more could you want in a screwdriver? Now here's another version of the ratcheting screwdriver. You have the white arrow here and you line that up with the arrows on the silver portion and then just as before you ratchet left or right. Now this screwdriver is included in a 10 piece ratcheting screwdriver set. That means it comes with 10 bits that you can insert on the adapter. You have three Phillips bits, then you have three flathead bits, a 1 8, a 3 16 and a quarter. Then you have four Torx bits. Let's talk about Torx bits and what they are. So if you look at a Torx bit, it has six points, like a six pointed star around it, right? Can you guys see that? Well, that's because it's meant to be inserted into a star head screw or a Torx screw. The word star is synonymous with Torx in the screw world. You can find Torx screws in consumer electronics, computer parts like hard drives, even cars and bicycles. This screwdriver even has an anti-rolling device. So when you put your screwdriver down, sometimes it rolls away, right? Everybody hates that. Well, this screwdriver even has a little device. It's rubber that you can stick on the adapter here, the end of the adapter, put it down, and I guess it helps it to stop rolling. And of course, it doubles as a storage system as well. You can store your bits right here. And another upscale version of the ratcheting screwdriver they made this one fancy. It doesn't even have arrows. It has semicircles that you gotta line up. Still has the same familiar bits, except for three. We got these right here on the end. What are these? They're called hex bits. Hex bits are six-sided bits, and those are for hex slots or hex screws. Hex headed screws are also known as machine screws and you find them in all types of engineering and different applications. Here's one more ratcheting design. You can pull the bits out like that. And it has a partner, a little stubby chubby partner right here. Okay, so let's look at some demolition screwdrivers. You guys ever heard of those? Well, demolition screwdrivers are just that. They're made for demolishing or tearing apart material. They're designed differently. As you can tell here, they have a strike plate for a hammer, right? So you put it against your material that you wanna split or demolish or break into, and you take your hammer and you hit the strike plate right here and you tear up your piece. Here's another one. 
right here, strike plates on these. If you look at the head on this one in particular, it's designed to really tear up stuff. Look at that, right? You put that into your material, take your hammer, wham, 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 and believe me, you're gonna get in there. It's like a chisel, it's like a spear, boring deep into your material when you hit it with the hammer. And it has multiple strike faces. It has this strike face, the main strike face, it has the side strike face as well. So if you have it in your material and you need to hit it that way, you can hit these sides, okay? There you go. And it's a screwdriver, believe it or not. Okay, so if you're an electrician or you work on electrical systems and components, you know that you need to be protected from electrical shock when you're using your tools. Now this is a three-piece insulated set of screwdrivers. It's a flathead, now what's this? Now this screwdriver head looks like a mix between a Torx screwdriver head and a flathead screwdriver, or a Phillips with two short ends. Interesting. It's actually called an ECX bit, and it's designed for a specific type of combination head screw that you find on certain electrical components. Then you have your Phillips screwdriver. The shafts are insulated, and that's what these rubber or plastic sleeves are covering the shafts and their advertised is rated for a thousand volts. Okay guys, we gotta talk about this. If you wanna magnetize your screwdriver so you can hold on to screws, that's what they got this for. A magnetizer and a demagnetizer if you wanna demagnetize it. So I got a screw here and I got a screwdriver. Let's see if it's magnetized. No, it's not. So let's magnetize it and see what happens. Put it in the magnetize section. Rub it back and forth. Now let's see what happens. Nothing. Let's try another one. All right, so let's see if we can demagnetize the screwdriver. You want to place it on the bottom step first, rub it around. demagnetize. Now if it doesn't work on the bottom step, you want to go up to the next step and do the same thing. But it worked on the first step, so this works. But why didn't it pick up the screw? Because certain stainless steel screws like 304 and 316 are non-magnetic. Who knew screwdrivers were so multifaceted? Did it make you want to go out and get a screwdriver right now? I know I learned a lot. Did you? Hit that like and subscribe button if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next one.